During his two decades at the helm of General Electric, Jack Welch redefined the role of the modern CEO. His management techniques transformed GE into one of the most admired companies in the world, a global conglomerate dominating nearly every sector in which it competes. One of the hallmarks of Welch's tenure was his ability to identify and groom leaders, leaders who have gone on to run some of the most successful companies in the world. Now, Welch, along with his new wife, Susie, formerly the editor of the Harvard Business Review, has written Winning. The book, a management guide for businesses big and small, lays out Welch's principles on how to lead, hire, and get ahead. Earlier, I sat down with Mr. Welch and asked him what are the traits he looked for in the people who became his key players. I'm desperate to get myself people that are smarter than me. I'm desperately trying to get people with energy. I call it the four E's. Energy, ability to energize people, uh, to execute, get it done, and have edge. And I uh, want passion. I want them to care more. Now, you said uh, success is all about growing others. And you, you have something that might be a little controversial to some people. You have some critics about differentiating the, your oh, yeah. employees. You have the top performers, the middle 70%, and the underperformers, which you want to kick out the door. Right. So how do you motivate the middle performers, and how do you get rid of the lowest? Okay, I think that uh, this is a widely misunderstood concept, but it is controversial. Uh, you want to make sure everyone knows where they stand in your organization. And it's a leader's obligation. Most companies, the, the leader holds back. People don't know where they stand. Uh, in this case, where you praise the top 20, you take a, the, the middle 70 knows how they can improve to get higher, and you never forget them because they're the critical part of the organization. And the bottom 10, you tell them, hey, it's time for you to move on. It's not firing. It's telling them to move on. Find something that way you, and they do themselves. You don't fire anybody when you do that. Maybe 20% of them. But most of them leave on their own because who wants to be in a place where they're not wanted? Nobody does. And what about um, winning is everything? That's something you believe in. I, I mean, is, would you rather be in the lo loser's locker room no. or the winner's locker room? It's just more fun. It's more energizing. It's more rewarding in every way, in the soul, in the wallet, every place you want to be. And people are, and to see other people win is even more exciting. Once you're a leader, your job isn't about you as much as it's about them. And what if you have a bad boss? Kind of turn it around a little bit. What if it's an employee who's stuck with a bad boss? First of all, the employees got to look at themselves. A real mirror test. Is it really the boss or is it them? If they find out it's really the boss, then, then they're going to make some choices. They've got to get some options to leave before they take them on. And, they gotta, and then they've got to take it, take it on. They can't be a victim. Jill, don't let anyone be a victim. They've got to take charge of their life. This is something you can really speak on. Working with your spouse or your siblings or your parents, how do you go home at the end of the day and take work out of the equation? Well, I, I think it's probably pretty hard. I think that uh, it'll always be in the background. It's always there. But if you've got a full, interesting life, you've got plenty of other things to do. But one of the things I see as an opportunity, I think there's nothing better than being on the same wavelength. You're talking about the same issues. I mean, writing this book with my wife was so, we never let it. We never left it. We had such fun with it. We talked about it in the morning, noon, and night. A lot of companies talk about this work-life balance, but really, I, it comes down to the employees. The company wants to make money. The company wants to succeed. So how can an employee really achieve a work-life balance if, if there are more and more demands from work? Well, the, first of all, employees got to make a click out choice as to what they want to do, and they got to understand their life and make a deal with themselves as to what they want to do. But then they can't think of the company. You said it just right. They can't think of the company as solving their problem. They've got to deliver on their own and over-deliver. I call it the old-fashioned chit system. If I work for you, Joe, and I deliver and make you look good and the company win, when I need flexibility, you will give it to me. The big word is if there. If, if, on the other hand, if I tell you, I'm sorry, Jill, you've got a big report due Friday, but I can't be around Thursday to help you with it. If I do that a couple of times, you're not going to be interested too much in taking care of me. All right, final question. Yeah. Um, and it's a two-parter. What's the best thing about being a boss, and what's the most challenging part of being a boss? The best part about being a boss is, is growing people. It is the thrill of all time. Give stock options, then watch the company win, and watch the people light up as they watch their lives change. 
I mean, I had such kicks over that. I like to watch these guys that are out there now who work for me running companies. It's an enormous thrill. The hardest part of a job of making the ugly decisions, letting somebody go. Awful. And that's why you can never surprise them. You've got to always be appraising them. They've got to know where they stand. Every time, if, if, if you've got any manager watching the show, and they aren't thinking about, do my people know where they stand? Have I told them candidly how I feel about what I like about them and what they need to improve? Then they shouldn't be a manager. Because once you're a manager, it's about them, not about you. And Brad, you might call him uh, pretty successful. Might want to take his advice here I, and now. I think you'd listen to what he says, like Tiger Woods coming over to teach you golf. I think you'd pay <laughs> attention, right? I'll take it.